Hi friends, here I sat somewhere in Mississippi. My so-called friend, Mark Johnson, threw me out, left the car on the side of the road, and is tore out for who knows where. And here I sat with my only friend, me, and I'm lonely and scared. Well, here it is, Paul and I again in the car, or in the truck, on a road trip. So that can only mean one thing, and that is that we bought another project. So we're on the road from Missouri to Atlanta, Georgia. Well, how far are we in on this thing? We've been going, what, three, three hours? Three hours. And so we're gonna stay the night down there somewhere tonight and pick up the vehicle first thing in the morning and then we'll be home tomorrow night. So we won't say what it is until we get there. I will say that it is a gamble by, sorry for the shaking, but we're bouncing all over the place. And we're, <laughs> Paul's driving. And so uh, it is a non-runner, no key. And so I don't know if it runs, don't know how many miles is on it or anything. So, but it should be fun uh, once we can get started, so. I'll let you know more about it when we get down. Copart in Atlanta, and if I remember right, I think there's four right. Coparts in Atlanta, and this is east, right? So, there it is, there's the sign. So, we'll get in there, hopefully there's not a big long line. Yeah, there's quite a few in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we got all the COVID restriction stuff going on, so this could take a while. Well, we've been at Copart for, what, an hour and 45 minutes, something like that. And we're just now, just now got called in to where I can give them the paperwork so they can load the car. So now we're waiting on them to actually bring it out. This is Billy. He was our last t-shirt contest winner. You too could win an incredible t-shirt like him and your life could change forever. You could be at your local Cars and Coffee checking out the sweetest cars the Midwest has to offer when faintly in the distance you hear what sounds like Godzilla giving birth. You turn to see what all the commotion is about and you see the silhouette of a race car coming over the hillside. As it gets closer, you recognize exactly what it is. A C7 Corvette ZR1 complete with the Carbon and ZTK packages. Wow, your eyesight is incredible. As it pulls into the parking lot, everyone stops to stare and see who's driving this incredible land rocket. The car is slowly creeping by you when it suddenly comes to a halt. The window rolls down and inside is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hey man, he yells out the window. I just won these in a raffle at the car show last night. I have two more of these at home, so I was looking to someone to give this away to. I just saw your shirt and hat and knew right away you'd treat her right. Dale gets out of the car, tosses you the keys, and says, I'll be in touch. You've just been given the most powerful car GM has ever produced. The point is, this shirt could change your life, but only if you enter. Winning a Rebuild t-shirt does not guarantee that your life will improve in any way. The scenario presented here is merely a possible outcome of an infinite amount of outcomes. Rebuild cannot be held responsible for your bummer of a life should you win the t-shirt nothing happens to you. Just know the t-shirt. It's free. Alright, here we go. This is a 2001 Porsche Boxster. And we'll have a discussion later about whether it's Porsche or Porsche. I always called it Porsche. But uh, we have no idea how many miles is on it. We don't know if it will start because it's got no keys. Now, I don't know why there's rocks here. It's not a good sign, but the paint looks really pretty good, I think. Here's the damage. We got our coolers hanging out down here. This looks like I don't know what's gonna be involved in getting that back out, but we'll see. We'll get it loaded and we'll talk more about it later. Porsche 
of Stuttgart, Germany has a rich heritage dating back to 1931. One of its first assignments as a company was from the German government to design and develop a car for the people. This of course became the Volkswagen Beetle, one of the most successful cars of all times. But by the early 1990s, Porsche was on the verge of bankruptcy. Its annual sales had fallen from 50,000 units in 1986 to 14,000 units in 1993. The main reasons were a slow U.S. economy and an expensive Porsche production process. Porsche looked at the competition and saw the success Mazda was having with the Miata. This was their inspiration to come up with a new two-seater Roadster. This car, though, would be a mid-engine Porsche-style Roadster. Porsche quizzed former Toyota engineers to find ways to streamline the production process. This helped drastically, and they were able to reduce the assembly time from one car from 120 hours to 72. The culmination of all these improvements and ideas became what is the 986, or the Boxster, in 1996. This car quickly became Porsche's number one selling vehicle. It also made the company the most profitable auto manufacturer in the industry per unit. The Boxster was only the sixth model made in Porsche's history. It followed the 356, the 911, the 914, the 924, and the 928. The Boxster has had four generations of body styles in its 25 year history. The first gen, the 986, was from 1996 to 2004. The second gen, the 987, was from 2005 to 2012. The third gen, the 981, was from 2012 to 2016. The fourth gen, the 982, was from 2016 to the present. Our Boxster is a first gen, but it is a 2001 model. So we get the benefit of having the upgraded engine which Porsche implemented in the year 2000. Our Boxster has 217 horsepower and 192 foot-pounds of torque with a five-speed manual gearbox. Okay, we are in Memphis, Tennessee where we stopped by E Street Automotive. Super kudos to them for hooking us up with almost all the parts we need for this before we even get home. They had fender, bumper, um, brackets, horns, uh, all sorts of little the cooling system, the fans, the brackets for that, the hood, this is underneath this blanket here, everything. Got, got it all together and had it waiting for us. Uh, here so when we came through Memphis we could pick it up so appreciate uh, Sarah and her help on that and if you guys need any parts and you're in Memphis that's the place to go also we had a major catastrophe on the highway we had a blowout of our back tire and we did not have a spare hi friends here I sat somewhere in Mississippi. My so-called friend, Mark Johnson, threw me out, left the car on the side of the road, and is tore out for who knows where. And here I sat with my only friend, me, and I'm lonely and scared. We just happened to do it on the road four miles from a town that happened to have these weird sized 14 inch tires that go on this trailer. <laughs> so we thank the good Lord for that, that we got there and they had the tire and they the rim was beat, bent up and they beat it back. And we were back on the road in like 45 minutes. So <laughs> we'll continue on. We're about three hours from home still. I almost forgot to tell you the biggest surprise was our plastic just flopping all over the place on the back and so I went back here to take that off and when I did look in the thing in the window here guess what was right there the key and this was sold as a no key non-runner so when we get back home we're gonna hook some juice to this thing and see if we can see what the mileage is so that was a huge uh, relief that was gonna be expensive Wow all right, so Paul and I made it back in one piece, thankfully, correct? And uh, we have not really done anything with this. We just, we I had to work today, and so we just parked it late last night when we got here, and so we just kind of wanted- 11 o'clock late. Yeah, and now <laughs> once we were here, we got 
and it's quiet because everywhere we stopped yesterday it was like trains or cars flying by or something and loud and so first of all let's look and see what we actually what's in this thing like you know we always like we can't get the trunk open yet because we don't have power but um paul look in that door over there and see what you are finding i see some sunglasses over here golly <laughs> is that their degree their diploma yeah. <laughs> look at this So we got a plethora of sunglasses. What's in the seat? A movie and a, what yeah. else is that? Oh, Cake some, and Trilogy. Oh, like a thing that makes a double power yeah. port. And check it out, the manuals are still in here. I saw that the first day. I had the full manual in the truck over there. Yeah. Oh, a suction cup. Uh, gloves. Masks, of course. More manuals. Man, I just can't believe that all the manuals are in here. It, there's never manuals in these cars. It's the warranty. Here, got my pay for going. All right. <laughs> you always put your two cents in it, Darth. <laughs> yeah. It's usually wrong, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, here. Hey, here's your bullet. A quarter. Woo! 27 cents. You're already making money. You are. It's wet. There's a window. Yeah. This window is open. I hate to tell you this, but I think the whole family only had one hand. <laughs> one glove. Of no, here's you one. Here's you one. <laughs> yeah, but it still don't laugh, man. <laughs> Four single gloves. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the big thing is what we're trying to figure out is how many miles this thing's got on it. And so what are you saying, Paul? Guessing. Look at the interior. First thing I always look at is this right here. Yeah. And that is not war. No. But, but that stress on the leather there where the veins are like, see how this is opening up? Mm -hmm. My first was, I was going to say 70 something, but I'm going to go 85,000. I'm going to go 100 and hope that they were just rough on it. <laughs> I hope it's not more than 100. And I hope it's not even 100. But if you can't, if you have no power at all, which we don't, I mean, zero power, you would open this uh, thing here, which is the fuse box cover. There it is. And there is a supposedly right here I think take that off and you connect your juice to that and then uh, it'll pop it but when I was walking across the front a while ago I saw a cable exposed in this wreck huh. so I bet you that is the, the uh, release so yep What we got in there? Treasure. Just trash. What do you call it? Man, that's oh, pretty uh, clean. See, this don't work. That's where the battery is. Oh man, you're making money. Golly. Is it dry in here? <laughs> what is that? More well, money. Oh, this is the tow thing. This screws in somewhere and you can pull. That. I think it goes into one of these holes on the bumper. And depending on how many miles this thing has, it might be one of those where I want to keep it just for fun because we got it cheap, I think. I'm going to take this off. And there's the battery. Hey, it's got an interstate battery. Okay, I'm going to go get the jump box and then we'll start this again. Maybe we can see what the mileage is. All right, we got the battery, the jump box hooked up. And we see a light in the trunk. We've got power. Let's see mileage. 103.975. That's higher than I wanted, but it's not astronomically high. Let's see if we can pop, pop 
the rear trunk. All right. Hey, we got a Bukumu stuff back here. <laughs> Those are dipstick. Towels. Hey, we need some more rags. Duct tape. Mm, it's gonna be too long. Hey. That's right up your style. You need a kitten. I'm going wabbit. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. There's a wabbit over there. <laughs> it's <can't say. laughs> like a storage unit. Rocks. Rocks? <laughs> we can find them in our cars? <laughs> We're doomed. <laughs> Golly. Yep. I want a dipstick. Chew. It's good. All right, are we ready to see if this thing will turn over? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo! We have a running Porsche. And no no check engine lights. Uh, no check engine lights. All we got is an empty windshield washer squirter and an open trunk. All kinds of trunks open. See if your spoiler will go down. The rear spoiler. Yeah. All the way down? Yeah. <laughs> I figured that was broke. Nope. It must have been up when he wrecked. Awesome. It's even got a full tank of gas. Like really? a full tank. <laughs> uh. All right, so we'll shut it off and see if we can get air in the tire and at least get it off the trailer. Well, Paul and I got all the straps off of this thing and uh, I realized that I don't have, I can't reach this with my compressor. So I'm gonna take all this junk off right here that's in the way and it's gonna drag when we try to move it. And then I'm gonna jack it up and try to get this tire off and get it down there and at least get it aired up enough to hold to uh, get it off the trailer and hopefully it holds on enough for that. So as I'm looking at it, right here is gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> I mean, that is, that's the edge of the tub and it's not, it doesn't look like there's frame damage because the frame looks straight, but connected to the frame up above it is this uh, tub. And so somehow we're gonna have to get that pulled back out so that our trunk or front will close correctly. So I'll go ahead and get this, this junk taken off. All right, so I have everything apart. All that junk is off and I don't see any other damage anywhere. The frame is definitely nice and straight. So that's good. And uh, the tire was easy to get off. So I'll go down there and see if I can get some air in there enough to hold it. Just get it off the trailer. All right, so I've got the tire in here in the shop and just aired it up and I feel air shooting out of the side of it right there. So there's a slit right there where it got hit. So that tire is shot. And uh, so I guess we'll just go get the spare out of the funk and put it on. And we'll move it down here and get it in the shop. So check it out. There's the spare. I just loosened up the nut that was on there. And on the back of that is the original jack and handle. So that's cool. So I'll uh, take that off and let's get it put, put on the car and get this thing in the shop. And I'm putting it on. I, I don't know if anybody knows or not, but is that an all, always a thing with the Porsches where the whole stud comes out? It's, that, it's not a stud for the tires to be on. It's a bolt and these things spin, putting them in so that they'll not grab the, the wheel. Man, that looks weird. <laughs> Okay, so it's back on all four tires. So let's uh, lift this trailer up, get it slot, uh, get it raised, and then I'll get in there and see if we can get power to it again, start it up, and we'll drive it around.
Well, guys, thanks for watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Uh, for you guys that were expecting this to be a vet video, I do apologize, but we are just now getting the paperwork back in from the state, so I got it licensed today. And so Andy and I will be shooting the finale video for that. Um, we'll be shooting it next weekend, so it'll come out the week after that. So there'll be one more Porsche video, and then we'll do the ZR1 finale video, which will do a price breakdown and and our first drive and all that. That should be a really fun one. So if you guys are enjoying the Porsche, or if you think you will enjoy the Porsche videos, give us a good thumbs up. And don't forget also be like Billy earlier in the episode. And if you'd like to rebuild it t-shirt, just make sure that you're subscribed, give us a thumbs up and comment below and you'll be entered to win. So we'll see you next week. And always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. See you guys next week. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.